Just having a late night cup of tea. April's giving me some of these. She bought these for me. They're Duami Bien, which is sleep well, uh, sleep good uh, in Spanish. Um, they're herbal tea, which works quite well. You do get sleepy after a cup of these. I need two. What I do is I'll just refill it. Once I've had the first cup, I just refill the same tea bag because they're, they're pretty strong. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about tonight. Um, what I want to talk about is actually about pre-planning. If you wanted to move out to the Philippines, I suppose you could do the same, Spain or anywhere else. Um, it's just a bit easier in the Philippines from the UK because you're only taxed on your local income, not your global income. Where if you're in Spain, you're taxed on global income. Um, but... With the apartments we have out in the Philippines, what we have is, it sort of come up this week when I was talking to Jay, well I was talking to him earlier actually, um, you can develop your own pension pot and it's reasonably cost effective compared to what you get ripped off with people managing your pension on this behalf of the state or private pension funds where you rob blind. Um, because when you build an apartment, you can rent it straight out, and then it just stays rented out. It's money's trickling through all the time, and basically, with ours, we sort of got it started. And as businesses have developed in the Philippines, or we've made extra money, we sort of been buying up bits and pieces. <coughs> and I was, this is what I get to my point. Um, Mark, who rents one of my apartments, wants to move to another one. Uh, one of the newer units so he was either wanting to move to the unit above him or in the other building and he's been taking some photos and I was sort of thinking well, those, those units have been sat empty because um, the one needed some furniture and the other one has basically got our stuff in it so we haven't really rushed to rent them out because obviously we're preoccupied here in Spain but the thing is now Mark's moving over that one it releases the one that he's in so that can go for rent and the one upstairs i'm going to move some furniture over to get that rented out between them it gives us um four apartments that will be obviously uh, having tenants in them um which will fund the next apartment which is the three bedroom one um but the point being is it's a pension pot it's a retirement plan. It's a bit of cash flow in the Philippines because once it's finished, it just generates money. Um, and I, I think that's the important bit because a lot of people wonder how they're going to be able to retire in the Philippines. But sometimes if you do it in stages, you can retire early because you've already built up your um, portfolio or built up your regular income before you even arrive and if it's offshore and your partner's income or a relative's income obviously it's not your income um because uk tax locally you know i tax my uk earnings but spain taxes internationally a uh, different setup so those sort of things can be kind of i think the us tax you globally as well but at the same time, if you've got a partner, it's not yours, officially. Um, but it works to develop you a regular income that you could actually use as a pension pot or an emergency fund or whatever you need it for. Another thing I've been using recently is peer-to-peer -peer lending. I use Funding Circle. I've been getting just over 10% return on investment. Um, I was explaining to Jay earlier. I says because I don't I don't tell how much tell people how much I've got in these things. But the whole point is, if I had ten thousand pounds in there, I'm getting ten another thousand a year interest. But because I'm not going to be touching it for the next decade, if I only left the ten thousand in there, this year would be eleven thousand. Then next year there'll be ten percent on the eleven thousand. So obviously it's going to be 12,000 and was it 12,100 or whatever. 
and then it just keeps rolling for the next 10 years but at the same time i'm also putting more and more money into it there's going to be a bit where it will become a bit of a pension pot um and i have to get be a bit careful once it gets so uh, to a certain point because i need to produce my actual real work my day-to-day -day work because you get to a point where you're paying more to the state than you really need to be. I've done this before where I have a cut-off point at the end of the year. So like now, because my work's winding down and since um, December I've been on a 20-hour week, I'll be filing for a tax return um, in for, for April because I've overpaid my tax. And it's all these little things that I think some people forget because they get so busy with day-to-day -day life that they forget there's easier options out there. A friend of mine does some stuff at the weekends with um, the wooden bowls. He <coughs> does arts and crafts with them. Um, but I also found a lot of the guys at my father's pho uh, photography club Make a living out of doing photography. They also make livings, um, it, you know, even just on the side, doing other things like um, weekend courses or um, they have these uh, days out, you know, to see out, you know, for photographers. And there's some good money in it. And this is the thing, there's a lot of stuff around if you think out of the box. Um, and the good thing is, if you get that as an extra fund, if you're managing on the money you've got at the moment and are happy at that, pile everything else into getting rid of your debt, and then the other one is start saving. Start getting it into investment. Start making money. Get it working for you. I know a lot of people are put off by uh, not seeing growth straight away. But I tell you what, once you've done it, couple of years and you can start to see that it's starting to develop into something that's uh, worth the time to invest in you'll start to see how you can move from day-to-day -day living doing stuff you have to do to start to develop a lifestyle where you're doing the stuff you want to do because instead of you having to do a 40 hour a week you can get get yourself down to a 20 hour a week or whatever it's like me I can live on a 20 hour week I don't like living on a 20 hour week because one of the problems I have is I'm still tied to here I can't travel around because I've still got to be here every day um, but at the same time there is always something you can develop and you also get some projects that come along that only run for a short period of time but you can make some good money and sometimes you've got to sit back and think is it worth the risk? If it is, just go for it. I did it with the call center. The call center made me some, some serious money. Um, but like now, it's sat, sat closed until I've got a project I can use it for. Um, but the other thing is, there's a lot of, even when we started, there was a lot of call centers going bankrupt. And I'm seeing a lot more call centers these days up for leasing the whole thing or seat leasing or um, they're moving away from campaigns because there seems to be uh, less campaigns about which is understandably because the laws have changed uh, understandable because the laws have changed relating to who gets prosecuted because um, they go after the main client at the end of the day because before they relied on being offshore because obviously it's a lot of hassle for a UK or US uh, company to prosecute somebody that's overseas but if they go to the end client which eventually has the products um, installed or whatever then it's much much easier um, so like that made some good money it's all paid for on to the next project and you just keep going you keep finding something new finding something new I've had a few, few good ideas come to me this week you know different people have approached me um, and I'm sure we'll get some of them working. The big problem I've had in Spain, I'll be honest with you, is my language. I don't speak enough Spanish. And that's putting me off a bit. Because uh, a, lot, a lot of people that would help you are absolute bloody crooks. Um, 
I've been lucky with Anders because he's he's um, he's a honest guy, but I, I've been screwed over a few times with some of the people here and the Brits. They're not the Spanish; it's the Brits that do it. Um, I'm not saying the Spanish don't do it. I, I, I just I've just had it that the Brits have been the one, the ones that have been a problem. Um, except for the mechanic, he was Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story but anyway yeah going off topic never too soon to start saving for the future never too soon to start developing things that can help you retire early or just get to the scenario where you can just think you know what I don't need to be doing this anymore I just want to go and travel or do something I've got enough money I'm making online I've got apartments rented out I've, you know my mortgage is paid off, all these sort of things. If you get into that sort of scenario, you're like, yeah, that's where I want to be. Thanks for watching.